Recently, I've been getting back into Japanese, and I thought I would do so with the Japanese translation of Moomin Papa at Sea. But what I didn't realize getting into it was how much of a shock it would be. So I had spent a bit of time focusing on German because of my Berlin trip. And I think that in Japanese, it helps to have sort of a mindset, a Japanese mode in your brain. And I think I felt that when I was reading the previous two Moomin's books, Moon Valley in November and uh, Moon Valley Midwinter in Japanese. At the time I was reading those, I was reading grammar, I was writing sentences, I was watching movies, YouTube videos, Dogen videos, and I was much more active in the language. And I think coming back to it after leaving that mental state is very frustrating. It also, it doesn't help that Moomin Papa at Sea seems to have a higher level of Japanese. Even on just one page, I added 20 new words that I didn't know to Anki, with four of them being just different synonyms for to look. You're also never quite sure what it is you've forgotten until you're confronted with a page of text that seems like gibberish. It's especially frustrating because I haven't forgotten the words I learned, so at times it's like, what's the point of learning so many words if it never seems to make the sentences clearer? And of course, the danger of all of this is that it creates something of a potential feedback loop. Struggling with something is draining and makes you less motivated to do it. But doing that less means that you have less practice and it will be more difficult causing you to struggle even more. Part of my solution to this is to begin Beastars, which I was already interested in reading, in parallel to the Moomin's book. Comics have an advantage in that most of the descriptive text you'd find in a novel is handled by the comics illustrations which makes for a faster and lighter read, as well as giving a heavy focus on dialogue. And actually, it's interesting to read Beastar's dialogue because of Japanese's system of honorifics. Different social situations, such as a boss talking to an employee, friends to each other, call for different grammatical structures and levels of formality. Because a lot of the dialogue in Beastar's is between high school students, the language is familiar and informal. Short forms are used extensively as well as colloquialisms and, most strikingly, sentence particles are omitted much more frequently. I was aware of wa, the topic particle being omitted in casual speech because of context, but I'm also seeing a lot more of o, the object particle being omitted. From the explanatory research I did, it appears that in very informal settings, it's acceptable to omit the object particle in extremely basic sentences. So, it's a little hard to explain in English, but imagine the sentence, I'm reading a book, which would translate in a formal setting to, Watashi wa hon o yondemasu. In a more casual setting, it would be, Boku wa hon o yonderu, where I would use boku for I, because I'm male, and boku is the casual masculine personal pronoun. Yes, Japanese, the pronoun that you use for I changes depending on if you're a man or a woman, casual, formal, old, young. But then, I could also leave that out and just say, Hon no yonderu, reading a book, where I leave out the I and topic particle because you know the book is being read from the object particle O, and because I'm saying the sentence, you can guess from context who is reading the book. The informal dialogue in Beastars goes one step further, where they would say, Hon yonderu, or even just, Hon yonde, leaving it in te form and not even conjugating it. This would translate to English roughly as, book reading because everything else is understood through context. Although this is extremely informal and colloquial, it does make sense that it's being spoken by high school students. Out of all groups, teens would use the most slang and informal expressions, especially joking around with each other. This is another reason why Japanese often translates weirdly to English, because as Tae Kim points out in his guide, the ways ideas are expressed in English and Japanese are fundamentally different. From the ground up, the way sentences are conceived and structured in Japanese are completely different to English and other Germanic languages. Circling back to first-person pronouns, an interesting thing to note is the variety found in both media properties. Beastars is primarily from a male perspective, so you can see a lot of casual masculine words for I, boku, ore. Meanwhile, Moomin Papa at Sea focuses primarily on Moomin Papa, an older male character who uses washi to indicate his age and authority, while a younger female character, such as Little Mai, uses atai to indicate a casual femininity. On the simpler side, I've also been playing some new language games. I found one that I hadn't tried before called Language Squad, 
where you're given a random alphabet out of, I think, a selection of 46, and you have to try and guess what it is through multiple choice answers. It is a little too easy, though, because most of the scripts you can memorize just by looking at a couple letters and understanding, oh, that is only in the Burmese script, that's only in the Yi script, whatever. And it's only when you get to the ones that are really rare or not really in use anymore that you have any real trouble. And you don't really feel like you're using your brain all that much. Like, I don't know how much I'm going to be benefited in the future that I know what the Yi script looks like. I do much prefer Ling Your Language, which is a game where you guess multiple choice questions based on an audio news clip of a language. I think that requires you to use much more of your kind of listening prowess. Although sometimes it does get a bit stupid where you're given six Slavic languages and you have to guess precisely which one it is. But that's all for this week. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. What have you been learning in languages this week? Tell me in the comments.